On today's show, Joey Kay speaks with former model and National League basketball player turned entrepreneur Titi Makonyere. Stay tuned till the end to find out about driving an electric car in countries with severe power cuts. Don't forget to give our show a thumbs up and share the video. Welcome back to Electric Drive Africa, the number one show for electric cars in Africa. Today we're going to be talking about load shedding and power cuts, which is like a big problem in some parts of Africa. So people always wonder how then can you live with an electric car in Africa when there are all these power cuts going around. Joining me today is the lovely Titi. Hi Titi, how are you doing? Hi Joey. Thank you for taking time to join us on the show. Thank you for having me on your Welcome, show. Welcome, Karibu Sana. If you live in Zimbabwe, Zambia or South Africa, you're used to this going around. Like in Zimbabwe and Zambia, between 8 to 18 hours a day, there is no power. In South Africa, the load shedding cycle is about 2 to 4 hours a day, depending on the level of, uh, of power outages the ESCOM needs to implement, depending on the severity of the, of the load they need to take out. So you might lose power of up to 4 hours a day, sometimes 2 times 4 hours a day. So we are promoting electric cars, we want Africa to drive. So people are always asking us, why, 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 and how then can I be comfortable with electric car if the power is always going? We do have crazy load shedding hours. Sometimes from 5 in the morning until 10 p.m. at night. On a good day, we'll have a power cut from maybe 2 o'clock in the afternoon until about 11 p.m. in the evening. So how then do you go about your business? How do you, how, how do you go about your normal day? It's um it's all about juggling your schedule really and sometimes like I say it's difficult because we don't have a set schedule we just know they'll be gone for most of the day so um basically you just make do with as and when the power comes um the hardest thing we've had is like you're saying if you have to bring work home and you think you'll have power and then you get home and you have no power for the whole night or you think you work over the weekend and come the weekend there's a power cut for the whole weekend and um i know people who've rescheduled their lives to working at midnight when the power does come around and then going to sleep at five o'clock when the power goes so you basically have to adjust your life and plan to plan around the power cuts and i see you also have a solar system which we featured on the show uh, two episodes ago check it out link below and so it's about planning so if you plan around the load shedding which is scheduled so you can then check it around and plan how to do your work you know when to charge your laptops you learn when to charge your cell phones. So essentially, one can do the exact same thing with your electric car. So power usually, say for example, in Zimbabwe, power goes from ten from five a.m. to ten p.m. So from then, you can then set your car to charge from ten p.m. to five a.m. A lot of these cars come connected; they come with an app. So then you can schedule. Okay, my car should start charging from ten p.m. to five a.m. Yeah. All right. We do have moments though. Sometimes we say, for example, my cell phone. I think, okay, I've charged my cell phone between the 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. Then I overuse it on WhatsApp and social media, and then halfway through the day, I'm out of power. What would happen with my electric car? Yeah, but think about it. What do you do in a normal day? You go to work and back, right? Or you go visit your friends and back. Yes. How, how far do you drive in a normal day? Back and um, forth. Oh, I'm not sure. I do maybe 10 k's in a day, my so back and forth. 10 k's back in the day. So most cars these days, have a battery pack which is which is bigger than 20 kilowatt hours so if you charge your car up to 20 kilowatt hours you can get about 100 kilometers of range so 100 kilometers is much more than you need you only travel 10 k's yeah yeah so so if you charge your battery and most of the time you won't even charge your battery to full you charge it from maybe because you don't drain it when you drive it every day you charge it from maybe 10 percent or 20 percent to about 80 percent so that's even if you didn't have solar and you charge it only during the night when the power comes back from 10 p.m to 5 a.m that's more than enough time to put 20 kilowatt hours and 20 kilowatt hours gets you 100 kilometers. That's 10 trips for you oh. before you drain it. And for your, the average person, maybe they drive about 30 kilometers or so, or so, backwards and forwards, 15 k's either way. It's still a lot of time. So as long as you plan, the electric cars we have now are pretty much good for your everyday living. So And also as you drive, it shows you from what they call the guess meter They call it because it estimates the range depending on your driving style. So you can see, oh, as I'm just like your, your fuel tank, you can see I've got... 100 kilometers to go, I've driven this much, I've now got 40 and things like that. So you can you can plan around that and you know your routes every day anyway. And the good thing about electric cars, if you're driving in the city, they also have what they call regenerative braking. So as you slow down, the, 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 the car recoups some of that kinetic energy and stores it in the battery. So as you brake and go, brake and go, you actually regenerate some of that electricity. 
Oh wow, yeah. so your range anxiety is actually taken care of. Yes, especially in the city there is no problem with range anxiety. But also if you have to drive uh, outside the city, there are some places now where their publisher just coming up quite, quite, quite nicely like in South Africa. You have what they call the Jaguar Parkway. You can drive essentially from Joburg to Cape Town and also from Joburg to Durban or from Durban to Cape Town. So public charges are coming and making, making long distance road travel quite feasible now. So range anxiety is something that people really worry about. But as we have been progressing, it's not really an issue now. And think about it. How often do you drive from Atlanta to Brewer? If you want to drive 500 Ks, how often do you do that? Not, not often, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm just thinking for people who travel as far as commute from Marondera, um, Bindura. That's okay. Can they do spontaneous trips on these electric cars or yes. they'll be like unscheduled guys? Yes, you can because Marondera is only 70 kilometers. So your, your basic electric car that you can buy right now is a Nissan Leaf, which can go 140 kilometers. So you drive 70 kilometers to Marondera, whether you're going for a school trip or to visit a friend, then you just plug it into their house and charge and then and then you come back. It's quite possible. Okay, so it so these cars are quite suitable for, for, for city driving or within metro commutes. Like the popular ones we have, like Joburg to Pretoria, Nairobi to Naivasha, all those common trips, you can do those, Nairobi to Thika. And if you need long distance travel, depending on your budget, there are long distance cars now, like your Teslas, they can go 500 kilometers, or your Hyundai Konas, and things like that. So they are getting to a level where you can actually do long distance travel in these cars. Okay, so yeah. you'd be taken care of. And then you mentioned how in South Africa, there are lots of these um, places where you can actually stop and charge. Mm -hmm. um, so if you were to travel to South Africa, you would have that facility. Yes. But locally, there is none available. As Not at the moment. So it's an opportunity that we're looking into to see how we can address the situation. Uh, it's, it's a chicken and egg thing. People are thinking, how do I buy a car when there are no charging stations? And the people who would put charging stations are thinking, how do I put the charging stations if there are no cars? All right. So, so for me, my solar system would be able to charge my car, so I can do that spontaneous travel. Yes, quite nicely. Remember, we said uh, to get about hundred kilometers, you need about twenty kilowatt hours, and this is just a, a comfortable estimate. So we're saying you're consuming two hundred watt hours per kilometer. So if you if for that, let's say you have a three kilowatt solar system, in about five sun hours, you would get fifteen kilowatt hours. And already that's, that's good enough to get you close to the 20 kilowatt hours we need to do 100 kilometers. But you, it's like almost like you need to adopt a top up model. You don't charge the car to full every day. You charge it on wherever you go. Let's say you go to the office. You can plug it on your normal 3 pin plug, charge it, trickle charge, charge it slowly. When you're in the office, it's charging. At the end of the day, you're done. You come back home again. And oh, you charge wow. overnight as you sleep. Is, does that have an effect on the battery? No, it's actually good for the battery because it's a slow charge. It doesn't put too much power at, at, at a go so the fast chargers which can charge in about 20 minutes from maybe 10 percent to 80 percent full those ones put a lot of power at the same time those ones actually have an effect of, of degrading the battery quicker so it's always good to limit the number of times you do fast charging but people who make cars they've modeled this they've studied this so like you know tesla have what they call the supercharger network you, you can charge as many, a lot of times until before they start uh, throttling how many times you can use the superchargers. Alright, yeah. so just so to explain it, to me in terms of charging, if I want to charge my battery to 100% every day, is that recommended? Not or really, it's I... better to charge it to 80% for the health, for the life of the battery because batteries have what they call like lifespan is determined in cycles. So it's always good not to overload the battery to get it to 100% full every day. So it's good to do it maybe once a week. So every other day you can charge it to 80%. And then once a week, you then take it to full. Every now and then it's good. But not so all the time. So if I had 80% and I only use 10%, I could then not necessarily have to recharge it. Not necessarily. Or you can just plug it in and charge again. Up to when, when, so whenever you, wherever you are, if you go to like maybe a friend's house and they have a normal plug, you can just charge it in. Or in some places now where they have charges at supermarkets, when you're doing your shopping, maybe it takes you about an hour or so to shop or at the mall, you just plug it in again. You just, so you top up as you go. So you never really have to worry about uh, stopping at a petrol station and things like that because it's, it's essentially just like a top-up model. You plug, as, you plug in charge as you go, wherever you go. Wherever you go. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was kind of thinking it would be like I do it my cell phone. I can charge my cell phone in the morning and I know the whole day I'm okay. Tomorrow morning I'm okay. And I only charge when it starts to flash red. You can do it as well. It's the same depending on your driving style. So if you, like you driving 10 kilometers a day, that's pretty, that's pretty okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. But if you're someone who has an office, but then within uh, their, their, their daily routine, they then have to move around to other offices, visit clients, and then, then it's actually wise that you just always be topping up as you go. 
But if you just have a normal office job, you go from eight to five, it's okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So in this environment, you would recommend the electric car and needing, if the need arises, we would then put in the solar panels at home to facilitate for charging our car. Yes, because as, as you know, living in Zimbabwe, their the, the petrol shortages are quite high. Like, petrol shortages are quite frequent. We always have to queue for petrol. So for convenience, whereas with the solar with the with the solar powered car, your electric car, you can have basically your own petrol station at home. Yes, hey, that's yeah. very convenient. You just as you go to bed, when you wake up, you have a full tank. You don't have to wait two days in a queue and looking for queue, calling your calling your friends and say, hey, where can I find petrol today? You know. <laughs> and uh, the other good thing about um, electric cars, especially in Zimbabwe and Zambia and Kenya as well, most Kenya and Zambia specifically, most of the power they generate is actually the green. So your car is driving on clean renewable energy. In Zambia, about 98% of their power is hydro, which is green renewable electricity generation. And also in Kenya, about 93% is, is, is renewable. In Kenya, they generate electricity from geothermal, from solar, and from wind, and a bit of uh, thermal power stations. So you're driving on very, very clean electrons, which is good for the environment. As you know, with climate change, we need to really, really, really focus on reducing our emissions. Oh wow, I'm liking this electric car idea. You know, it reminds me of how we as Zimbabweans always make a plan. When mm -hmm. we went for months and years with no tap water, we all found uh, an alternative, drill boreholes in our backyards. Now this electric car can save us from these fuel queues. We just get a fuel tank almost in our home and fuel as and when we like. It's is so convenient. Exactly, exactly. So, Titsi, I know you've done a lot. Uh, you're quite enterprising. You used to play National League basketball. You've dabbled in some agriculture. You've got the degree in finance. Uh, you're quite entrepreneurial. So, in your next endeavors and adventures, are you then going to consider some sort of business in the electric vehicle ecosystem on top of maybe looking forward to getting one yourself? Okay, we've um, been toying with the idea of um, maybe having like delivery vans. You know how with this COVID thing, nobody wants to go out and about to shop and whatever. Mm -hmm. So we're actually considering maybe like veggie deliveries or grocery deliveries. Mm -hmm. um, we're even thinking even messenger services. These electric vehicles would be very um, profitable, I think. Yes, because uh, your operational costs come down because you don't have to maintain them. The maintenance fees and costs for electric vehicles are lower because there are fewer moving parts. Then your, your service cycles don't involve a lot of things like changing the oil, removing the spark plugs, changing the timing belts, uh, the cam belts and all those things that you get in a normal uh, internal combustion engine car. So as a fleet operator in a business, for example, with lots of vehicles and doing deliveries and high mileage or high duty cycle service vehicles, you will then benefit from all those efficiencies unlocked by the electric car and electric van. So it's, pretty, it's a pretty good idea and I hope uh, it works out for you. Great, thank you so much. I hadn't actually thought about the whole spark and service maintenance thing. I had just focused on the fuel bill. On the fuel bill, yeah. yeah. But it's about, so if you do that, what they call the total cost of ownership, let's say over five years, if you add up all the times you have to take your car for service every 10,000 kilometers or so, and all the parts, uh, the insurance and the petrol, compared to the electric car, you would save quite a lot. The electric car comes up cheaper. There's this misconception. People think ah, batteries of their cell phones are like, Done in two years and you need a new one. Electric cars are not like that. Electric cars have been conditioned with special uh, battery management systems. So the battery does last long. It doesn't just die in two years and you have to replace it and you have to fork out $10,000 to replace the battery. No, the batteries can go quite a long time. Like in, there's some studies they've done where the battery actually outlasts the car. Like uh, right now, um, the Tata, they've given an eight year warranty or 160,000 kilometer warranty on a battery. Same for BMW, Jaguar, they give out all those cars. And also Toyota, Lexus, they brought out a new electric vehicle where the warranty is 1 million kilometers. Oh. All right, you've just made me think of something else. Yeah. Um, I know people will say something is draining my car battery. <laughs> <laughs> your normal 12 volt battery. Uh, speaking of that anyway, your car, your electric car still has that normal 12 volt battery. That's to start the car and also to for the electronics and all those things, the radio, oh, so the infotainment. Like, and then this battery we're talking about is the traction battery, the one that drives the wheels. Oh, they're yeah. two different batteries. They're two different battery, batteries, yeah. Okay, so this one that drives the wheels will have no surprises. No, no surprise at all. Yeah. yeah. Okay, alright. Good to know. <laughs> Good to know, exactly, yeah. Joey, this has been very informative. Thank you so much, Electric Drive. It's definitely time for the transition. It is. And thank you for joining us. We'd love to have you again on the show. 
And thank you everybody for watching and don't forget to subscribe and also check out our merchandise on our Teespring store. We've got caps, uh, backpacks, hoodies, t-shirts, cool stuff. Please go and have a look and order. Thank you very much and see you next time.